Well, hello, forensic accountants. Hello, and welcome to <coughs> our review of chapter one, all about uh, Excel. As usual, this is the timeline of the chapter, and we will talk about some of the middle uh, functions over here and uh, Excel dashboards and the like. So, fraud types, I define them at the uh, beginning of the chapter. Really, the one that we care about most is occupational fraud. This is where somebody uses deception to um, take some of the employee uh, employer's resources for their own personal gain. There is one chapter on financial statement fraud that is very difficult to detect. And the incidence is also very low. Thank goodness. Now, when we do one of these uh, projects, these are the main steps and watch. We start by setting the objectives. Um, right about here, we also going to talk about false positives and how, how we rerun the data and how we sort of tidy things up if there's just too much to look at. But number one, we start with the objectives, then we obtain the data, then we do what we need to do. Um, be careful. What we don't want to do is say, I have this data. What should I do with it now? Uh, let me try and run some analytics. Eh, not so good. How about we start with the objectives? Now, our final result is going to be some kind of report. We're not the prosecutor, we're not law enforcement, but we are going to report on what we find. And I'm happy to say that this document here is in the Dropbox folder, and I will give you uh, a link to it in the description just below the uh, title to the video. They've done a really good job um, and they actually cover all these bases. You'll see the exhibits actually take up uh, most of the report. I like it and it's a good read all about the bookkeeper who stole, I, I'm guessing, about 75,000 from the school district. Excel. Everybody likes Excel. As much as you like it, where it's not going to go away anytime soon, and thank goodness. So, we will use Excel for these functions over here, including data visualizations. Tableau, really good, but if possible, I just simply do it in Excel. I like to send the results to Word, I like to send the results to PowerPoint, and we're going to be talking about some of what's happening over here. So, Conditional formatting, if, pivot tables, VLOOKUP, and dashboards. So, let's go in and let's have a look. We'll start with the first one that we saw there, which was conditional formatting. So, coming up two chapters from now, we'll talk about Benford's Law, and this is basically a first two-digit graph. And the typical question that I would ask is, what are the three largest spikes on the graph? A spike is where we protrude above the Benford's Law line. Well, you might say this is clearly the biggest, and I just know it, that this is the second biggest, but those three sort of look about even. So, if I had to ask you what the three biggest spikes were, and I would say we have to use the criteria, the Z statistic, then to get the three biggest ones, we can use our good old friend, conditional formatting, and I use this all the time. So I've highlighted it here. We go home, well, not home, but home here. Conditional formatting, top bottom rules. You have to click top 10, but then you can change it to top three. And in summary, it is now highlighted the top three. And I wasn't correct. Those uh, three at the, on the left aren't in the group of the top three. 50 is the biggest, 75 and 78. So 50, 75 and 78. It is using something called the Z statistic as the criteria to measure what is biggest. So that's coming up. 
two chapters from now, but at least that's conditional formatting. Let's close this one out here. We don't save it. And let's go here and we are going to do a little bit of VLOOKUP. So, I have my county data, state, county name, and the population. And I basically want to say that I want to describe the population as small if the population is from 1 to just under 15,000. Medium, 15,000 to just under 50. Large to just under 500, and very large, anything bigger. Well, we can use VLOOKUP equals, put the caps on, nice and clear, VLOOKUP. What do I want it to look up? I want it to look up this number over here. And I want it to go to this range over here. And I know that I need to make this a fixed, so we're going to put F4, so it's dollar $i$2, F4, $j$6. Go there and look up. Look up what? On the left, and then return the value on the right. So I needed to return the, um, the value in the second column. It could have been in the third or the fourth. And what I want to do, I just want an approximate match, and it's helping me a bit here, was true. So, it doesn't have to find the exact number. It just has to find an approximate number. And what Excel is going to do, it's going to go down, and the first time it sees something to be true, it'll say, that's true. So it is bigger than 1 and smaller than 15,000. It'll call it small. Enter. This one got large, and it is large. Copy everything down. Medium. That is indeed medium. So we're good to go, and that is the lookup. Now, the other thing was if. If I wanted to count all the mediums, I could use if over here. Equal. If, if what? If that equals medium, let's see if it puts it in quotes itself. If that equals medium, then one. Else, give me this is value if true. Value if false, zero. Let's see if it works. Nope, it really wants medium to be in quotes. So we'll go quotes medium quotes and there we go this is not medium but if i copy it down watch the plus sign and a swift left double click copy it all the way down there are all the mediums they all have a one if i now count i can count or sum because they're all equal to one if i sum everything here it's going to tell me how many mediums i have and it's saying 1134. Now, that's a bit of a long way to go around. What I could do, I'm just, we can remember that. I'm just going to go and use a pivots table, but let me just uh, give a break in the data here. There we go. I can go here and use a pivot table, insert pivot table. It's got the range, it's good. And we can go here. And what I can do is I can do description as a row. And I can actually do description as a count. And it knows it has to count it because it can't sum it. And here I go. It's going to tell me 848 large, 1134 medium, that many small, and that many very large. Let's go medium. It is 1134. 1134. Things look good. That, in short, is a pivot table, and we will, in fact, uh, do pivot tables um, in the case for this chapter. Uh, what else was left? Dashboards. This is the example. 
in the book. Um, purchasing cards, I have dates, I have names, I have amounts, and I've got the year out of the date. We can put all this in a dashboard, and that dashboard is shown on page uh, 46. Here we go. I can just show the 2018 numbers. I can just show the 2019 numbers. I can clear this and show them both. I can just show Amy. I can just show Andrew. I can just show Maria. So just watch, Maria is just over 4,000. Um, what I can do is just Maria for 2018. Just Maria for 2019. Um, I'm going to clear this and the two colors will come back. So, this is a dashboard. This is called a slicer and it sure will slice and dice. However, Excel can do it, but the real powerhouse is Microsoft Power BI. This is Power BI desktop. And in fact, you can see it's got the filters ready here. It's ready to do visualizations. It's ready to get the data. It's ready to insert a dashboard. Power BI is made for dashboards. Now, almost done. We covered all those. Uh, pivot table, V lookup, dashboards, if and the like. PwC's Halo for journals. This is nice. This is indeed a wonderful dashboard all about journal entries. The excitement. Amazing. I write the book. I've watched that website for five years. I've referred to it many times. <laughs> when the book, book gets published, goodbye. Can't find that um, website. And I'm talking about halo.pwc.com. It's mentioned about uh, 15 lines down on page 47. However, those of you that know about something called the Wayback Machine, how about you do it? Go on the Wayback Machine, see whether you can find halo.pwc.com and leave a comment. I'll be uh, very impressed if you find it and if you tell me that you found it. So, almost done. Summary. We have the main steps, uh, the point that I want to make in the middle here, and my summaries include a bit more of a discussion. It says, half of all frauds are discovered by tips, by accident, by law enforcement, and by confession. This means that if we really do proactive fraud detection work, we can do very well. This is not how we are discovering our frauds. This is, and none of this has to do with forensic analytics. So. Excel is popular. There's a limit on the number of records. Things are just jumbled up and we'll see access doesn't do that. Uh, once we start adding more and more bells and whistles, we have a good chance of things going wrong. And the last one is limits for multi-user environment. So on that note, that is the end of our review of chapter one. Bye-bye.